lot of electronics hobbyists are searching to fill in in the gaps for you know products and things we, we want to accomplish you know through uh, through building things and we're, we're trying to just assemble something that doesn't already exist like uh, we have all the technology and all the parts you know available to us but it's just not it's not offered off the shelf and so someone has to build it you know why not us I think the first the first major thing that really got me into into uh, working with electronics was this um, this Christmas present that I that I made for someone uh, freshman year of college. Truthfully, it began uh, with my father in Albania. It was communism, and only the oldest son could go to college. And my dad had a really strong interest in electronics. When he was younger, radios were all the rage. Transistor radios were just coming out, and he loved tinkering with them and so forth. But he was the youngest of three sons, so. The government jerked him around for a bit, and eventually they said, you can't go to college. And so when I was younger, he, uh, his passion kind of uh, flowed into me as well, because he would still do these things on his own, because no one ever allowed him to go to school for it or work for it, so he would do them for fun. Well, I first got into lasers when I saw the prime meridian marked by a big 5 to 10 watt green laser shining across the sky, and uh, I'd never seen one before, so it fascinated me. There's, some, there's something gratifying about, you know, building hardware and uh, seeing it work. <laughs> yeah, so this is a, a word clock powered by the Arduino. Uh, so the Arduino is uh, this board back here. And obviously there's some circuitry, circuitry that the Arduino controls. But uh, basically uh, all these wires feed into a, uh, a panel that's inside this picture frame, which is a panel of LEDs. And uh, the LEDs light up these words that you see here. And so it's basically a clock that you read in words instead of reading the clock, instead of reading the timing numbers. That's when I realized that I could do that, that I could make things better than they already were. Yeah, my favorite build lately has been using the, um, the M140 diodes that come from a Casio TV projector and building a 2.5 watt laser out of them. It's the most powerful handheld laser you can get. I think building lasers will always be a hobby of mine because ever so often technology will jump ahead and they'll come out with a new laser diode, a new wavelength, or a higher power. And so there's always something coming up that I'm excited to get. Um, my main project right now is, uh, is wearable electronics. Um, and in particular, um, I am trying to make um, an affordable, durable, uh, wearable video display. So it's the the my concept is that um, you'll have you know, an article of clothing or accessory or something like that that will display information or display you know fashionable patterns that you can change at the drop of a of a hat. Um, also make you visible at night, say if you're if you're running. This is the new design, uh, but I can show you part of the the one that we've been using for a while. So here's what this looks like. Like this, you know, as you can see, it's it's very floppy and flexible. And uh, something like this uh, is sort of you know threaded into a pocket that uh, that a sewing professional um, uh, puts into one of these these vests or or jackets that that we work with. And um, so, so we slide it in, into the pocket, and it's sort of protected and held inside the garment. And then we just have uh, a few simple wires coming down to the pocket, where um, where it'll connect to a little controller like this. So this thing, it's a simple. Uh, it has simple CD controls on it, so you can play video, stop it, or advance, or you know, uh, go to a previous uh, little movie or animation that you want to display on it. 
technology has a very polarizing effect in that it is a have or have not uh, kind of thing. Here in the US, I have a cell phone, I have 4G, I have a high speed dual core processor, I have servers at my house, but there's a large portion of the world where it's, it's kind of this dream that happens in other parts, it's kind of like space travel. You hear about it, but you never, you never experience it. And it's, it's a sad thing at times, but uh, I don't feel it's a reason that you should step away from it. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. Sometimes it can be relaxing when, when I'm building the lasers, other times I can get frustrated as hell. Start throwing things around. <laughs> Today was one of those days. Um, but yeah, they'll always be a part of my life. It's something I enjoy doing. As I get more confident about electronics, you know, hopefully it's something that you know I can um, work with other people with. You know, maybe actually do like you know real like more advanced projects. Maybe you know something that can be like um, you know actually not just for hobby but marketable. Maybe something like that. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of unlimited working with electronics. I just kept learning more and more about you know what the electronics industry is really all about. I mean, we have all this amazing new technology in it, and this is sort of how it starts. And uh, now, the uh, within the last couple of years, I've seen the hobbyist community start from really just you know blinking lights on and off um, to making some really sophisticated things. And uh, the the stuff people uh, you know these hobbyists are making. Um, it's really phenomenal, and so I, I, I think it's affected me in a, in a very positive way. Being a hobbyist is, is a lot more than just you know making circuit boards and, and, and blinky lights. It's, it's more about you know pushing your abilities to the limit and just doing as much with your life as you can in the little time we've got.